The environment inside of the combustion chamber is extremely violent. You have air and fuel rushing into the cylinder through the intake valves, and then the valves slam closed as the piston compresses that mixture into an area that's 10 times as small. Then you have the ignition system, which ignites that mixture, causing a pressure that forces the piston back down in the bore. If you think that sounds violent, just imagine what happens if the ignition timing fires at the wrong time. That controlled burn turns into a violent explosion that destroys anything in its way. Welcome to Prestige Motorsports. I'm Eric Labore, and this week's Hardcore Tech is all about ignition timing. We're going to look at what happens if you have incorrect ignition timing, the difference between initial and total timing, and then we're going to show you how to correctly check your timing. Ignition timing refers to the angle, measured in crankshaft degrees, at which the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture. Now, as the mixture burns, it expands, creating a pressure in the combustion chamber. The goal here is to have the maximum cylinder pressure occur at a specific angle after top dead center when the piston is starting to make its way back down the bore. And cylinder pressure works with the direction of the piston, shoving it down the cylinder. If ignition occurs too soon, the expansion of the mixture collides with the piston in a violent explosion known as detonation. And detonation is caused by ignition timing that is too far advanced, and it's extremely detrimental to the engine. So what is the result? Well, besides a reduction in power, detonation will cause blown head gaskets and even piston failure. Detonation can easily be avoided by making sure your ignition timing is set correctly. In order to do that, you must understand two different ignition timing settings. Initial timing and total timing. First, understand that the amount of time it takes for the air fuel mixture to burn is the same regardless of engine RPM. So in order to have maximum cylinder pressure occur at the same point, ignition timing must change with RPM. At a lower RPM, the angle at which the spark plug fires can be closer to top dead center then at a higher RPM where the angle needs to be increased. How much it increases is determined by the timing curve. The bottom of the timing curve is represented by initial timing. Initial timing refers to the ignition timing angle when the engine is at idle. Total timing represents the top of the curve and refers to the timing angle at which it stops advancing. This usually is above 2500 RPM, but it will vary depending on the application. It's absolutely essential that your engine builder supplies you with a total timing degree and RPM. To properly check ignition timing, connect your timing light to the vehicle battery and then clamp the inductive pickup around the ignition wire for cylinder number one. If there's an arrow on the pickup, make sure it's pointing toward the spark plug. Start the engine and let it reach idle speed. Point the timing light at the timing pointer on the front of the engine. Each time the ignition fires the number one cylinder, the timing light will flash allowing you to read the degree mark on the balancer. The degree marks on the balancer are always in relation to the number one cylinder. Next, rev the engine until the degree stops increasing. This is your total timing. If the degree does not match the total timing specification supplied with your engine, Adjust your timing by turning the distributor. Once the total timing is set, take note of the timing degree at idle. This is your initial timing. Initial timing is used as a reference only and will change if the distributor is replaced or adjustments are made to the timing curve. Always set your total timing first, then make a note of initial timing for future reference. Engines built by Prestige Motorsports have a short groove etched on the balancer for zero degrees and a long mark for the total timing degree in case the printed degrees ever become illegible. Ignition timing is one of those areas that you cannot afford to guess at. Make sure you know exactly what the total timing requirement is for your particular application. Verify that total timing is correct first, then see where your initial timing ends up. 
If initial timing needs to be changed, you must change the ignition curve so that your total timing stays the same. Remember, initial timing is only for reference, while total timing is critical to keep your engine alive. Now, it's time for me to get back to work. So, thanks for watching. I'm Eric Labore with Prestige Motorsports. If you have any questions about ignition timing, please feel free to send us a message through our website at prestigemoto.com.